Welcome. How's business? Business is doing very well. Uh, we have met our targets for our first half. Um, according to our earning announcements, uh, our first half is doing very well. For contractor sales in China, we've already been on, already on track, around 60% of our target. Uh, and if you look at um, January and February, we're seeing a big recovery for our retail sales as well. For our K11 sales in Hong Kong, we are actually increasing 40% year on year growth. Uh, and in China, we're doing around 150% year on year growth as well. So we're recovering very, very well. GBA is a big, Greater Bay Area, that's a, that's a big priority area for you guys. Just give us an idea, what's the plan in the next five years? So we, we are, uh, Newer is actually the earliest dominant player in Greater Bay Area since 2016. We have uh, spent over 30 billion in acquiring 1.5 million square meter of land. And a lot of people will ask me, why will you be so putting so much <laughs> eggs in uh, Greater Bay? And the reason why it's very simple, it's, it's 5% of China's population, but 13% of the GDP of China. Right. So the population is growing, disposable income is growing, and is actually very young. So this is going to be a very important, uh, has a very big potential in uh, disposable income and also um, uh, a market, marketplace that is exactly like a South Korea. 70 million right. uh, population is exactly like South Korea. So big market uh, and, and young audience. Do you get a sense that you're underinvested? Like, is 30 billion now, does that seem like a small number? Like, is, is there a, are you looking to increase basically your capex and your exposure to the GBA? Yes, yes, we're, we're uh, keep on incrementally you know, adding more, but the most important thing is to find the right locations. Okay. Because we're, we're, very, we're focused on quality um, land, um, so we don't want to have a bidding war with our, uh, with our peers, uh, but we really want to f find a good uh, location and also quality, um, uh, to provide quality services to our customers. Is that, and you mentioned triple digit growth in China last year, is, is that sustainable? Is that, is that the rate of growth that realistically we can expect over the next five years in terms of, uh, at least for you guys? Yeah, our CAGR growth, uh, our guidance for our CAGR growth is double digit rental growth for all K11 projects. We're building 24 K11 projects mm -hmm in the next five years. And for residential projects, we're guiding um, a double digit for our contractor sales uh, in the next five years as well. So we're very optimistic with Greater Bay Area uh, and also China as a whole. Double digits is 11 to 99. Is it closer to 11 or is it closer to 99%? So a, a nice you know, double digit, okay. uh, you know, no teens. Uh, you know. Recently, one of the concerns has been that it's not so much that we're looking at a property bubble, but there have been signs that the activity has really been picking up because you mentioned supply chains. And you look at the activity levels, they've certainly gone up. What are you seeing from your perspective? Is, are we getting to a bubble? Is it, is it getting a little bit too frothy? What are your thoughts on that from a developer's perspective, of course? From a developer point of view, I think um, it's, I think it's, a great, it's, 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 it's striking a balance. Okay. We feel that it's striking a balance. Yes, there's a lot of rumors saying that there's bubble, but I feel that there's a, a balance, that is, there's like some consolidation, but we're seeing also a lot of growth in certain fields. Like for example, in the innovation side, in the TMT side, um, we're see, still seeing a lot of uh, venture, cap, uh, venture companies that are actually growing. Uh, so it depends on what field we're talking about. Like for example, healthcare, for example, like AI. These are all very important types of uh, uh, path pathways in, in China that's actually growing uh, because people do need uh, these. So for example, for, for New World in innovation, uh, we focus on s uh, customer relationship management systems in uh, recommend recommendation engines, algorithms, AIs, and also data analytics. These are things that companies need. We need them. So we still have a very strong demand in China for these uh, products and these companies to, to surface and integrate with our New World ecosystem. Um, and so, for example, we have a Eureka Nova, which is an open, innovative uh, incubation program. Okay. And we try to empower millennials, uh, tech startups, to co-create with New World. So we have around 58 companies that integrate with our New World uh, Group ecosystem. And uh, in this ecosystem, we have around 17 business units, 14 million members of our New World members. So we're able to offer to these um, uh, tech startups in order to integrate, with, uh, to co-produce co co-create IPs. And what I'm trying to say is that these are very important because we are the customers. We need them to give us the, the services and products. So as a result, we invest in these companies. Same as in China, we invest on, in these companies as well. And healthcare, 
AI, uh, these are all uh, things that I think people are willing to invest and th that is growing. I was actually going to ask you about that and take a step back. It seems like you're doing a lot of things. What's, what's the rationale from an overall strategy perspective? Why get into all of these things that traditionally you guys are not known for? Yes. So um, my, my vision for New World um, is to really connect businesses with social progress. So creating the shared, uh, shared value with society and really giving back. Okay? We want to, we are a B2C business model. We want to enrich our consumer daily lives with three things, powered by three things, culture, creativity, and innovation. So what we want to do is we want to also want to create this human-centric ecosystem because we have so many business units. We have 17 business units, 40 million uh, members. We want to cu curate and create a customer journey. So the customers can navigate in our private ecosystem, this inner circulation, and increase the customer value. So that's why we have hardware. You cover all aspects of their lives, from buying a house, from staying in our hotels, shopping, but at the same time, enjoying our services. What is the, the most needed services? Healthcare service, educational service, uh, and also insurance service, and maybe financial service as well. Right. So, if you think about it, it's all intertwined in this um, private ecosystem, and we can actually not only just uh, cross-sell uh, business opportunities, but increase stickiness, increase customer loyalty, uh, and, and increase our customer value. For a customer point of view, it's a curated and a customized journey. And that's why we need technology to be uh, uh, inside this ecosystem to enhance it, as I mentioned before, customer relationship management system, data analytics so that we can understand what the customer wants and recommend the right products and services to them. And, it, and so that's why we're developing how, uh, technology and we're building our techno technological innovation center in Guangdong as well. Okay. So in order to you know, propel and fuel this innovation engine into our traditional um, uh, businesses and hopefully to extract more customer value and repeated purchase and customer loyalty. Is, is, that, is that a separate sort of line of investment? Because we talked about 30 billion. That seems to be, correct me if I'm wrong, simply purely property. Uh, what I'm trying to get to is, because you guys hired a senior banker recently, and that perhaps sends the strongest signal that you are looking beyond property that you, that you just mentioned there. Uh, is there a dollar figure that you have in your head that you're looking to spend on these key industries, and what are the key industries for you? Give us the top three, for example. So key industries, all, you know, so for example, property is always our key industries. P property is the foundation right. and the fundamental rock. Mm -hmm. you know, but customers are living in our properties. Customers are shopping in our, uh, in our, in our, in our, in our retail. Customers are um, staying at night in our, in our hotels or working in our offices. It's all intertwined. It's to enhance that customer value, that single unique uh, visitor, unique customer and it's unique VIP and really enhancing, the, and enhancing it and really extracting that, that customer value while they're actually buying our apartments, living there, right. shopping in our retail. I think that's, that's the most important thing. And we can't do it because before it was all very, all very spread out or right? everyone had their own business units. But now with te technology, with our CRM system, with AI, we're able to understand more about, about you, David. And you can, and we know that you have shopped in, uh, in K11, you have stayed at Rosewood, right. you, have, you have bought our uh, apartments, and we, we may give you more rewards. For example, using, we have a, a little uh, kind of interesting synthetic currency called K dollar, right. where I've used able, yes. so you can, you have no, you have no earning uh, 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 limits, and you have, no, you have no burning conditions as well. Mm. Treat it as a currency, and we may able to subsidize more, we can reward you more, and your stickiness is important for us because um, you have more repeated purchase and more cross-selling uh, cross uh, opportunities. Just using the K dollar and really implementing this ecosystem within our found, uh, fundamental uh, businesses like, like properties, uh, hotels, our cross-selling sales has increased 17 times last year from before because of these technologies and this, um, this private ecosystem. And, and there's a vision, which you mentioned earlier, is to basically integrate everything and keep the, basically keep the customer in. Yeah. It, it, the short way, I guess, of describing that. What, what would the revenue split then look, you know, in terms of vision to you, let's say in five years' time, is it, is it still majority property, or do you actually see that then divvying up across many of these different areas. What does that pile look like to you? So I think you know, in five or 10 years time, you hopefully all the healthcare services, insurance services will grow. And hopefully uh, 
let, let's talk about you know property development and also recurring income, right? Right. If you're talking about re re uh, recurring income and property development, it's probably 50 50 percent by 2025. Okay, so recurring income coming back from getting rents, you know, from, from shopping malls or from offices versus, you know, development properties is probably 50%, 50% uh, by 2025. If you talk about the services, I think in, you know, in five to seven years time, hopefully we can go to 20 to 30%. I think that's already a very high uh, composition. Are you concerned? This, this, you know, people talk about an exodus of families, whether that's 1% of households. I mean, we've modeled it at Bloomberg. When you get to 8%, 8% of, of households leaving, then you, you know, spare capacity in the industry becomes significant. Is that a risk to you guys? How do you guys view that? I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a risk. I think it's a very, uh, I think it's a very small segment that okay. people are, are, are leaving. Um, overall, people are still having a very strong hard demand uh, in, the, in the housing segment and housing sector. So we're seeing that um, we so that's why there's a 5% five, 5 uh, single-digit growth. The political environment, the question of is, 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 is the ease of doing business in Hong Kong, is it going to get a little bit more difficult and challenging simply because of the complexity of the political environment? It's, it, it's neither black and white. What do you think? Like, what is the future of Hong Kong business going to look like? Because the future is looking very, very different. You know, for us, we, you know, we are very optimistic with Hong Kong. And we will grow together with Hong Kong. Our horizon is actually long term. So in the long run, we think it's, um, it's great.